it's all about individual setups for tomorrow. And if you stick to the individual setups, instead of looking to try to figure out where the directional macro flow is gonna go. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. I guess you trade long enough, um, you finally see everything. Guys, good evening, everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrade.com uh, nightly update show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. So yesterday, uh, just going back to uh, 24 hours ago, right? Markets were absolute euphoria. You had uh, Google uh, coming out with earnings, announcing a 20 for one split. Uh, AMD had really, really good earnings. Uh, everything was great, right? Uh, the NASDAQ 100, they blew through the 200 day moving average and um, it was phenomenal, right? First close uh, over the 200 day moving average in about three weeks. And the one thing we kept on, well, I kept on reiterating last night was, well, now that we're above the 200 day moving average, right? Now that we found love, right? If you go back to last night's video, well, what are we gonna do with it? And we, we got our answers very, very quickly. So the NASDAQ 100 comp was up about 300 points right from the word go. Uh, I tweeted out this early, I go, how crazy is this? Google is up 300 points pre-market on 100,000 shares traded, right? Absolutely insane. Um, you know, AMD was, you know, 30s. You know, it just everything was going absolutely nuts. Uh, Amazon was up 80 points. Uh, it, it was just a, a free-for-all, right? Absolute free-for-all. And the question was, you know, it's not how much we're going to be up today. It's how much are we going to be up today? And this is like the old uh, adage by Chris Berman, great, great ESPN uh, analyst. This is why we play the game. And I, I, I tell you, I've, I've seen a lot of different weird things going on in the tape. Um, but today was probably the oddest. And the reason why I say that. It's very rare that you see, uh, number one, the Qs pre-market. I mean, they were just, just out of their minds, right? Pre-market, they were 372, okay? 372 and just building and building and building. And then slowly but surely, you got a little bit of a headline that Google was uh, intending to do some sort of shelf. Not a big deal. Again, bigger companies are completely different uh, than smaller companies. Bigger companies do it because money is completely free to borrow. Zero, right, right, zero rates. It's cheap money, all that stuff. Uh, small companies do it because, well, they have to hold on and they have to uh, leave the lights on. It wasn't a big deal, but slowly but surely, everything got pulled, right? Uh, AMD got pulled. Google got, was starting to get pulled. Everything was getting pulled. Tesla uh, couldn't, you know, couldn't find the bid. And then slowly but surely, everything was going red and the nasdaq not only did they give up you know their gains right give up the big big gains and six dollars away from the 200 day moving average they lost the 200 day moving average right and everything started to get really really hit Qs went down all the way down to one to 364 and you say to yourself i can't believe the Q's just reversed $8, lost the 200-day moving average. I can't believe how bearish this is, right? How can you buy stock after they just lost the 200-day moving average? Before that sentence got even warm, right? I, I went to lunch, we were red. Came back from lunch, the Q's not only, you know, not only reclaimed back the 200-day the moving average, it rallied $4 off the bottom within 40 minutes, okay? That's how aggressive it is. And, but slowly but surely, we started seeing how a lot of names just, just weren't rallying with the market. And because we had another slew of earnings tonight, it was very important for the, for the Qs, right? For the bulls to hold on to that 366 on the close. And to their credit, they absolutely did so, okay? Market held up, they rallied into the close. And now the question was, well, let's see, right? This is, you know, Facebook comes out with earnings. Facebook's been crushing their numbers, right? But this isn't Facebook anymore. It's the meta universe, right? It's the NFT world. It's, it's, it's not Facebook anymore. It's meta, right? Facebook crushes earnings and apparently meta, e not so much. 
And this is obviously the complete opposite of what happened last night. Everything last night was going absolutely out of its mind. And now this evening, only 24 hours later, everything is completely imploding. Like literally, like last night uh, did not happen. Everything is just getting absolutely destroyed here. And the craziest part about this is how yesterday we reclaimed the 200 day moving average, right? Not only did we, we lose it today on the close, we lost it by about $5. So this is definitely one for uh, the record books as far as crazy market action. Okay, I, I thought the I, I thought the the trading itself was pretty good today. Uh, really good bounce on AMD today uh, off the sixty minute view. Uh, really good bounce. Really good short on Tesla. Uh, Tesla, by the way, setting up tomorrow. If it confirms today's five day moving average. Right, there's a really there's a lot of room down, uh, but the most important part is kind of where we are. And I always say it doesn't make a difference how we get here. Right, the scoreboard is the scoreboard. There's no such thing as uh, there's no such thing as um, uh, cheap. There's no such thing as expensive. There's no such thing as overextended. The last price is fair value, and now the bulls are in a, such a weird ass position that not only did they have to fight to get back to the 200 day moving average, they have to fight literally everything that we, we lost today, yesterday, and then some just to get back to the closing price today. So crazy, crazy. So let's, re, you know, let's uh, review, reclaim the 200, lost the 200, reclaim the 200, lost the 200, reclaim the 200, closed really, really strong, everything imploded, yada, 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 here we are. So how do we make sense of this, right? And I, I think if you try to overthink this uh, going into tomorrow's session, I think your brain's going to explode. Okay, number one, we know nothing makes sense in the market, right? Good news sometimes is bad. Bad news is sometimes good, vice versa. Nothing needs to make sense. That's the first thing. And I think instead of sitting there trying to figure out <clears throat> macro where the next move is going to go, Assume it's going to go down until we reclaim back the 200 day moving average. So if you believe again in these little lines and they make sense and they're kind of important, then the cues for tomorrow, the bulls only job for tomorrow is bounce off whatever the lows are, bounce off, reclaim us uh, 366, at least on the close, at least then going into, oh, by the way, kind of another important uh, earning session tomorrow led by only Amazon. Okay. Um, then and only then we'll have a true kind of digestion of information of what is real and what is just a lot of volatility and a lot of noise. So a, a lot of times, you know, you'll, you'll hear me, you know, have a pretty definitive opinion, right? I'm pretty good at having a definitive opinion. Even if that opinion is wrong and the market plays out the wrong way, at least I have a feel, at least I have a sense. Yes. I mean, obviously we're below the 200 day and I'm, you know, I'm looking at stocks and I like some names. Uh, to the downside tomorrow, but would it really shock me based on what we saw today, how the market kind of gets off the mat and kind of starts reclaiming levels again? Nothing would shock me. So again, sometimes guys, you have an opinion, you have a definitive opinion, you have a bias, you have a definitive bias. Once in a while, you got to turn around and say, I have no effing idea. And that's okay, right? A lot of times you see people are trying to make themselves look smarter and I figure this out and I know this and how can you not know this is so obvious and this is so easy. Let's be honest. We're all human beings. We're all schmucks. We're all idiots. I'm the biggest idiot of them all. And the most important part is like I say all the time, I don't like to guess. Tomorrow, instead of trying to figure out which way is up or which way is down, let's leave it to the professionals, right? Let the, 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 the professionals, the I told you so's and I know it all and all the, everything is all great, blah, 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 blah. It's all about individual setups for tomorrow. And if you stick to the individual setups instead of looking to try to figure out where the directional macro flow is gonna go, I think it's gonna, you're gonna find yourself a lot more focused in on the really good setups and the focused in on a lot of good charts instead of trying to figure out, well, where the hell is Google gonna bounce tomorrow? Where the hell is Facebook or Meta gonna finally stop its bleeding? And I think if you go through that day, if you go through tomorrow's session, kind of individual setup versus macro setup, I think you're going to be fine. Because if you look at the setups for tonight, right? If you look at the setups, I, I think there's some pretty good value. I mean, look, look at Tesla, right? Tesla today uh, lost at 905 level. Per great trade today. Great, great trade. Uh, it stopped perfectly on the five day moving average. And if you guys have been watching this video for a long time, you kind of know how important 
the five day is. So if, if this thing confirms the five day, which is the shortest term sentiment for me, look how much room you have left. You know, look how much room you have in Tesla. So obviously, I'm watching Tesla. I definitely want to see uh, if the, it could hold today's ranges. If not, at least we have a definitive area where to hit stock, and you know, it could be very, very good. UPS had a really big move yesterday. Um, and again, it held up very well today. This thing, it looks really poised for the next leg up. This thing looks pretty good, right? Like really, really good. Again, you, you don't have to overthink it. It's one of those stocks that just look very good. And if it confirms, they'll probably go higher. Uh, look at a name, for example, like GameStop. I know, I know the apes, the schmucks, everything, right? Blah, blah. Oh. Anyway, you see this little channel here on GameStop, right? You see the low here? You see today's low, it's kind of the same low. If it starts cracking down this low and starts building, why can't this thing go back to 86, right? There's some value there. So again, we don't need to be smart. We don't need to uh, have this crazy notion of what we think is gonna happen. There's value in front of us. And PayPal, they got absolutely smoked today, right? Really, really smoked today. If this thing opens up today, it opens up tomorrow and gets stuffed at 60 minute supply, you know it's gonna go red at least once, right? And if it starts losing today's channel, despite it being on SSR, you could probably get a second day, very, very aggressive pull. So going into tomorrow, I'm Delta neutral. I have no idea, I have no opinion. I am not smart enough to figure out what's going on. The market is crazy as F, but it's tradable. And that's the most important thing. So if you take a deep breath, and concentrate on the task at hand, the research at hand, instead of the all mighty noise that's surrounding by social media and television and everything else around you, it's much easier to navigate instead of having a broad opinion that anything could possibly happen. Guys, have a great night. God bless. I got my son's basketball game. And with God's help, I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.